Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, before we start, just two announcements. The first one is Damien and I um, will work on updating the Ingress controller that we use on the Kubernetes cluster. This is a task that we delayed for too long, basically. So it involves um, deploying a new controller, redirecting the traffic, the DNS traffic, um, uh, the, the, the network traffic, sorry, to the new controller while we put down the old one. Um, so nothing, I mean, normally we should have should not have any downtime, but um, yeah, the risk is zero does not exist. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll take, we'll work on that on Thursday. The second announcement, which is so, next week, sorry. Sorry, Olivia, just for clarifying. So this is the ingress controller to the Kubernetes cluster. And therefore, if it were to go down, anything that's hosted in Kubernetes could be affected, is that right? So it's Jenkins.io, for instance. And... Yes, so okay. every Thanks. website. Um, so that's why we deploy a second one. So the idea is we deploy a second one, redirect the traffic to the second one. Um, we upgrade the first one, and then we go back to re re redirect the traffic to the first uh, controller. So that's, that's the idea. Um, so because those are just uh, um, stateless application, um, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, we did that several times in the past, so it's not the first time that we do this operation. It's just that because you have to deploy a new controller, redirect the traffic, and then redirect it back, um, it can take some time. Um, but otherwise, it's, yeah, it should be fine. The second announcement is next week, we will have an LTS release. Or an LTS release. Um, so this is something that we have to pay attention. So if we plan any work on the release environment, we should not, I mean, we should be careful. Um, so that, that's it, basically. So don't, don't be too don't change too many things before the next uh, LTS release. Um, that's all for the announcements. Um, regarding the notes, as again, um, those notes are prepared so for days in advance. Uh, so feel free to just um, add any topic that, we, that you want to discuss um, in the notes um, so we can come prepare for the meeting. So the first one that I want to discuss briefly is I've been thinking in the past about how to um, split the role of the infrastructure officer to delegate the role um, so the committee could take um, more responsibility here and so if you have any suggestions there um, I, I mean I would be really happy if you could think about that the way I would think is would have to uh, to have a shadow infrastructure officer responsible for specific area um, and those are, I mean, the same person does not necessarily have to work on everything. Um, so we could have, let's say, someone more interested by Kubernetes, someone more interested by Puppet, um, monitoring, alerting, CI shared libraries, whatever the topic is. Um, so the idea is if you find a Git repositories or an area that interests you, feel free to, um, yeah, feel free to start reviewing PRs, maybe put you in the code owner. I mean, those are, uh, I would be really glad to, to find ways to, to, to delegate, delegate a little bit of responsibilities um, here. So yeah, any question? Um, I think um, the first step is if you, there is an area that interests you and you don't really know how to, to start or to contribute, um, I briefly mentioned that in the, the next one of the next topic, but we started documenting as much as we can. So if something is not clear, um, feel free to ask and I'll, and I'll try to find the right person who can put the documentation on Git repositories. But I, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming to that point in one moment. Um, so I'm going to just switch to continue on the documentation topic and then we'll, we'll continue with the so I'm just switching the documentation. So we stay here. Um, so with Damien last week, um, we started discussing about how we can improve the documentation. And the challenge that we have is we have different kind of information that we store on the Jenkins Info organization. Um, and we have different ways to work with that. Um, so the first is you have, we have 
like this meeting, we have synchronous communication um, where we want to have different people working on the same document at the same time. So that's why we introduce ACME. So everybody should be able to, to participate, to take notes, basically, um, add content, um, reorder, whatever. Um, so everybody is invited to participate. But otherwise, for specific documentation, um, it's better to just open um, um, a pull request on the repository Jenkins infra slash documentation. So let me, um, okay, I'm, I'm sharing here. So this is the Git repository that I'm sharing. So as you can see, we we have a directory containing Kubernetes maintenance. Um, so those the idea is to collect information when we do maintenance on the Kubernetes cluster. And we want to add more documentation each time we have to do some maintenance. So we prob we add a document for the N Nginx controller that is coming on Thursday. Um, we are taking notes for the meetings. Um, and we want to add more uh, the service documentation. So we are still uh, building that Git repository, but um, yeah, feel free to feel free to request specific um, information. Um, and then another element um, that was asked last week um, is what do we do with information that we don't want to be public, like for instance, run books. Um, the idea here is just to, 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 to document a specific service and inside that specific page, we just put links to the run books. Um, there are different reasons why we don't want to have, let's say our run books public um, because it involves either personal information like um, call that person if something goes wrong um, or do specific operation that we want to keep private. Um, so yeah, that's that's why we 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 still have different kind of documentation on the Jenkins Info organization. Um, again, feel free to participate to that project. Um, any question before I continue? No, awesome. Um, the next topic is um, instabilities. Um, if CI. So um, on the past few weeks, we had quite a lot of issues with web sockets. Um, Damien, do you want to continue on that specific topic? Yes, so uh, I've monitored since last week uh, the WebSocket issue. I haven't seen uh, on any on, on the logs, so I might have missed some. It's not completely uh, rocket science there. Um, but yeah, no, no, didn't see it happen again. I've monitored the throttle status of the AKS API, the Kubernetes API we use for the underlying Kubernetes. And it was not throttled anymore since the incident last week. Uh, I'm not sure if it's correlated or not. Uh, so right now, the reality is that we don't know, but it looks like that it has been a bit more stable. So even though we had quite a lot of builds on Infra CI, uh, so I'll, I'll, I just want to mention that on the Infra CI topic, since there were a lot of issues, especially it was taking like more than six or seven minutes to restart. There were issues due to performances of the data volume on Azure. Um, there were errors that were taking a lot of times to load. There were a bunch of tiny elements that took a lot of time to restart and it was restarting the jobs in loop, sometimes failing. And there were also some jobs that were running since five, six, seven days even. So we are iterating on infra CI configuration little step by little step to be sure it should be better. But right now we did not face the WebSocket issue anymore, which seems to go in the direction of our guts when we say the upgrading Kubernetes and uh, accelerating the jobs should be okay. So let's wait and see, but for now, no issue. You know, there there isn't... Thanks, Damien. There is another point that we, we changed last week. Um, we faced our issues with the traffic with get.jenkins.io, which is a service running on the Kubernetes cluster. Um, so I'm just wondering if yeah, if the fact that we now stop redirecting part of the traffic there um, reduce the pressure on that cluster. Might be. Um, yeah. The pressure was not on the cluster itself, but on the request made to the Kubernetes API. So the amount of requests done by a kubectl client native or common line. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for this. 
Um, next topic, which is also something that Damien has been working on, um, is about cleaning the Datadog configuration. So just a bit of context here. Um, the Jenkins project is sponsored by Datadog to monitoring um, a big part of the infrastructure. And a while ago, we started using Terraform to configure um, the monitoring checks. Um, those Terraform, uh, those, uh, the Terraform code was applied from ci.jenkins.io. And what Damien did recently was to first update the Terraform um, dependency. So the idea was, was to move to version 0 0.13 um, and also clean up a bit of um, yeah, legacy around that, that project. So if you want to look at that specific Git repository, it's located on Jenkins Infra slash Datadog. Um, and now the, build, the, the, the that repository is built um, that Terraform code is, is executed from infra.ci. Um, we used to have a staging environment, but we stopped using that staging environment. The reason for that is because um, for some of the synthetic checks that we have on the prediction account, we had to request um, to increase the limits. So we, we, we send a request to Datadog support to increase the limits of the number of synthetic checks that we can have. And so because of that, we cannot use a Terraform code to deploy in the staging environment anymore because we are limited to three synthetic checks or something like that. So um, yeah, the work done by that by Daniel here was really to, to, to simplify. Um, and if you are interested by a specific um, dashboard or whatever, um, that's the right place to go. Uh, if you want to improve the monitoring of a specific service, that's also the right place to go. Um, still on the Datadog topic, we have multiple components. So we build our own Datadog Docker image. So we have some custom checks. Um, that's how, for instance, we monitor if we can still download the latest um, Jenkins packages from the service get the Jenkins.io. Um, we also use that monitoring to know if the release process is not, st is not stuck. So typically what happened in the past was the release process released, um, use Maven release plugin to publish the Jenkins war. And for some reason, we were not able to package the new version. And so we had to manually trigger the packaging um, job. And so when the same situation happened now, again, um, we just detect that, um, that specific issue. Mark, I see you that you're wondering, um, do you have any question on that topic? No, okay, sounds perfect. Um, so yeah, custom checks for Datadog and otherwise everything is maintained through um, Terraform. Okay, next Just a topic. reminder that the goal is to ensure that we can build correct SLO, maintain as code. So the first step was to be sure that the CI, since we use as code, was fixed. It's our ability to update and do whatever actions. But the near goal for end users and us is that we want to improve the monitoring to be sure that if we are triggered on page duty is because something is really broken because currently right now it's quite verbose. So we risk, the risk is that we can ignore um, a real positive issue. And the goal is try also to automate most of these things to provide the statu automated status for the end users at any moment if one of us is not available. That's the near goal. There is one specific topic that I found um, that happened multiple times in the past was um, we update the Terraform code, it, it's working. And then after several months, it stopped working and we have to look at it again. And um, I saw the same behavior for some of the Docker images. And so we should have probably put in place some monitoring. Uh, let's say if some builds are not passing on the master branch, someone should fix it. I mean, I'm guilty in some of them. Um, I was just surprised this afternoon to look at uh, a bunch of yeah, failing job, yeah, even if we work on those previously. That's a good point. That's a question we won't answer right now. This is where will this alert will go? IRC channel, email, whatever notification matrix message that I, I think the, the question duty, that the question yeah. that that, the, the, that would be we will have to answer that question in order to implement this yeah the, but this is something to keep in mind um thanks thanks everybody um the so the next topic which is yeah the jenkins area thanks damien for putting that as well um so sounds like you finished working on that do you want to share the state here 
we can start using Kubernetes pod template for the agent and CI Jenkins IO. Um, the underlying cluster has a static capability right now, three nodes that are uh, medium sized nodes. Uh, so for tiny steps, it's okay. So the next step will be to start moving some workload hitting the limits and then improving the automatic scaling of the underlying cluster. That would be the next step, but it has been successfully applied. And there are some minor configuration changes that we will have to do in order to improve switching to WebSocket, etc. But overall, it's working very well and really efficiently. So I'm quite happy with this. Uh, all the jobs I worked on uh, took twice or three less times to, to build. Uh, because they were building on uh, virtual machines on DC2 before. So the performances for these use cases were quite better by moving to Kubernetes. So next step is real life workload now, not a medium okay. task. And, and, and I would be really interested to, to work on that with you uh, as soon as possible because we are investigating ways to reduce the cost of CI.jenkins.io. So um, if we can be more efficient with that service, that would be really nice. Um, okay, right. The, the, the last topic, um, sorry, yes. So, oh, before, so I'm assuming for now that the experiment is explicitly only for uh, Linux-based agents, no Windows-based agents, right? So we're not attempting the, the wild card of Windows-based agents in Kubernetes. It's I don't on the think roadmap. That, it's on the oh, roadmap, it but haven't been worked on yet. Perfect. We have a working example on infra.ci but it needs some work to be sure we, we deploy this on the public cluster. Great. Thanks. Um, the, last, the last topic um, that I want to highlight is we transfer a few Git repositories from Garrett's um, um, GitHub account to the Jenkins project. So feel free to look at them. The first one is the UC. It's a small, it's a small tool um, that you can use to bump a plugin version. You just provide a plugin that takes T and then um, UC will automatically update um, for a specific Jenkins version. Um, we are using it at the moment to build um, the Jenkins, uh, the Jenkins infra, um, Jenkins um, Docker images, um, and it has been working very well. Um, the second tool that uh, I mean that you should definitely look at is the Jenkins version. So it's also a small binary, and it can uh, you can use it to know what's the latest version, either the latest table or the latest wiki a uh, weekly. Um, so we've been I mean this is this is a tool that we are using. I'm not sure if we are using specifically this this version and the monitoring in Datadog, but you are definitely using um, in several location um, and in the release process. Um, so the idea is really to be able to know what's the current um, stable version and it gives you that number. And so when you use the Jenkins version and the UC together, so that's what we are using. Let me share those repositories. Um, so if you want to look at how it's used Jenkins, I'm going to go here so you can see my screen. Jenkins infra and it should be docker dash let's say Jenkins LTS. So we have a specific Git repository for the LTS for stable and for the release for the weekly. So we provide the plugins um, that we want to that we want to install. Um, by the way, you remove the in your right. So is the SSH agent has been fixed. No, yes. So we can also specify to not update a specific plugin. So this is something that we still have to work on for the release environments. So we can specify to not update a specific um, file. And then when you look at uh, Jenkins, no, it's not here. So I guess it's on GitHub Action Workflow update. Mm, where is that? Ah, yes, it's using GitHub Action, so it won't, it won't be easy to, to show. But um, basically, if you go to the UC or Jenkins version, let's, let's take Jenkins version. You go for the latest release. You go for the latest release, and then you can directly download um, the, the binary that you want to use um, if you're running on yeah whatever the distribution you are the, the architecture you are sorry and um, and yeah that that's that's pretty useful um, 
and finally, the third uh, project is Captain Hook. Um, Captain Hook is a webhook proxy, but the specificity here is to um, collect um, every webhook that should be sent to the Jenkins. Um, but if for some reason the Jenkins is down, Captain Hook cache those requests to when Jenkins is back uh, on track. Captain Hook send those um, requests to, to, to the Jenkins. Um, the idea is no. We have some configuration to apply to use it on a Jenkins infra project, but because we restart multiple time uh, per day the Jenkins instance, we want to be sure that we connect, that we keep, that we that we handle every web webhook request. Um, so yeah, that's also another project um, that we are currently testing. We cover all the topic. Um, so any topic you want to briefly talk here before we stop the meeting. So one call, two call. So yeah, I already put, so then this week, I already put the link to the next um, notes weekly for the next weekly meeting. Um, feel free to add any topic you want to discuss there. Um, and yeah, thanks for your time and goodbye. See you on RC.